Simple, fast, and focused. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea, Tim. So how many of you would like to work in a more simple, fast, and focused manner? We all know that over the past couple years, there's been some budget issues and even some staff reduction in our, in our field. So working in a more simple, fast, and focused way can be very beneficial and necessary nowadays. So we've already showed you two applications, the collector for ArcGIS and the dashboard for ArcGIS. That is a downloadable, configurable application that you can get up and running with right away. For this next portion of the seminar, we're going to be showing you more configurable applications that will allow you to work in a very simple, fast, and focused manner. That's right. One of these resources that many of you have maybe already taken advantage of are story maps. How many folks here have seen or used story maps? Yeah, they're really becoming very popular. So what a story map is, is a configurable template that is powered by a web map. And it takes your web map and combines it with multimedia information like uh, video or photos, uh, descriptive information, and it wraps it up in a really nice interactive application that's really a lot of fun to use. These are becoming very popular. So let's take a short look at a video from Alan Carroll, who's the manager of the Story Maps team here at Esri. Hi, I'm Alan Carroll. I head Esri's Story Maps team, and it's our great pleasure to help you turn your wonderful data your great maps and analyses into stories to share with lots and lots of people. So the way you do that is you create your maps, you do your analysis, you publish it on our online resource, ArcGIS Online, and then you can marry those maps up with related multimedia content like photos, videos, text, and then pour them into our templates. And what our storytelling templates do is provide a cool and engaging user experience that suits the kind of narrative you want to present. My team has been building and improving on a list of templates that, that enable storytelling in different forms. So for instance, if you want to do a travel log or a walking tour, you can do that. If you want to compare a short series of related thematic maps of one geography, you can do that. If you want to present a place-based narrative that takes you from you, the user, from point A, B, C, et cetera, we've got the map tour template. Short list is less sequential, and it's more a uh, curated list of points of interest. So you, if you've got a city or a park or a district or whatever, you can present in categories, things like hotels, restaurants, points of interest, you name it. Swipe and Spyglass can be really useful if you've got two things to compare. So it might be uh, an archival aerial photograph compared to a current satellite image, or it might be two related maps like obesity and diabetes with, uh, with similar patterns that you want to compare. Our newest template provides a sequential or hierarchical list of locations. <coughs> Uh, we published a map, for instance, of the busiest airports in the world with Atlanta at the top of the list. But it could be used for all sorts of things, like my 50 favorite places. For years and years, GIS professionals have been doing amazing work, mostly behind the scenes, a lot of it incremental, a lot of it technical, and necessarily so. But as the power of our tools, of GIS itself, and of these amazing new things like mobile devices and tablets and the continuing explosion of the internet. As we continue to gain momentum, we've got enormous new opportunities to tell our stories. I hope our story maps enable you to do just that, because if we together work hard to reach new audiences with great new stuff, with your powerful and important stories, we can together change the world. <laughs> These story maps are really becoming popular. Lots of folks are using these these days. I've been working with a number of agencies recently to help them out with some ArcGIS Online work, and they've been putting out some really interesting story maps. Uh, some of those have been uh, public art, uh, historic districts, uh, restaurant and downtown districts, new businesses to an area. 
Agencies are also putting out facilities information on their story maps. Parks, uh, libraries, even things like fire district or fire stations. So I did have a call a few weeks ago from a public works group. They were interested in whether or not using a story map made sense for them. They'd seen some other departments using them and they weren't sure that it made sense for things like you know, water mains and street resurfacing. Now, personally, I think that makes perfect sense. What do you think, Harry? Uh, I agree 100%. It does make perfect sense. And here's why. I've been recently working with San Bernardino County and in their public works department. What they've done is created a story map of the public works CIP locations. And what you're seeing here is their real live story map. Any of you can go and find the story map and search for it. What they've done is they've presented information in a way they've never done before. They have a story map showing at the bottom all of the CIPs that they're in charge of. And I can click on any one of these and the map will automatically zoom to the location where the CIP is. And it'll give me a picture with an update on some of the status. For example, we have the contract amount, the start date, the end date. So this is available for all of their maps, or all of their projects that they currently manage and maintain. And it's very nice to have both this interactive map and this crucial information directly in one location. So how did they do this? Well, they actually started with a spreadsheet. So this is the spreadsheet that they used to present to the public for their CIP locations. It's, it's good, but it is missing one major component, which is a map, and here's why. You'll notice here, for example, on this particular CIP, it's happening at Alabama Street Culvert. Well, if I'm not intimately familiar with this area, I'm not sure where that culvert is. And one of my favorite ones is the CIPs that happen in various locations, because sometimes resurfacing doesn't happen on just one street segment, it's in many different locations. So my goal is to take this spreadsheet along with images that they had taken of the projects and combine them with existing GIS data that they already had. So the GIS department did manage and maintain actual uh, information about the CIPs, as you can see here in my map. This was already published directly from ArcMap to ArcGIS Align and is being seen in this web map. But what I want to do is combine those other two resources. To do that, it's very straightforward. All I have to do is click the share button. And I want to share this map as a web application. The web application I want to share it as is our map tour one. So I'll go ahead and just publish this directly to ArcGIS Online. Now I want to be clear. This application is going to live inside of ArcGIS Online. I do not need my own web server outside of the DMZ to manage or host this application. It's all happening in the cloud. So I'll call this San Bernardino County CIPs. And I'll go ahead and just publish this directly to ArcGIS Online. So let's go ahead and look at that item and begin to configure it. So once I've created this application, I've gone into the item details, I now want to configure it using the Configure App button. And this is going to present me with a couple of different options. The first option that's going to show is where should I host my pictures at? Because right now my pictures are stored on my laptop. They're not anywhere else. What I want to do is actually create a hosted feature service for those pictures so that they be, they'll be stored inside of ArcGIS Online. And I'll go ahead and create that service that will manage and maintain those pictures for me. And there we go. That service has been created and I'm now presented in the builder mode of this particular story map. So the first thing I want to do is add a location to my map. So what's nice about this is not only can I just drag and drop a picture, if that picture has XY data on it, which most digital cameras now take, the story map is going to recognize that and place the point in the correct location. So I also want to fill out some other information for this. This will be the, the stuff that is on the spreadsheet. So this is my Alabama Street Culvert. I'll simply just copy that and paste it here. And then I'll say estimated cost. 
grab that information from my spreadsheet as well. And then end date. And then I'll say dates are subject to change. And now you'll see that my point was put where the x, y coordinates for that picture were taken. If I don't like them, that exact location, I can move this point at any time to give me better understanding of the location for this particular CIP. And then I'll add that tour point. So there we go. You can see my thumbnail is behind here. The information from the spreadsheet is located on here. I'm going to adjust just a couple more settings. The first will be the color. I'm going to change this to blue. Also, I'm going to turn off the logo, but if I had a logo, I could put it on there and make a link to it as well. And I'll go ahead and apply that information. I'll save my changes, and we'll see what this looks like. So there we go. We be, we've began to make this story map. Now, I could go and do this 18 more times for each one of those CIPs, but that would be pretty redundant. I showed you this very detailed process so you'd understand exactly what's happening when one of these maps are being, when these story maps are being created. Just to let you know, the trick is you can create one spreadsheet with all this information in there, drag and drop it into the map, and all your points will be created. The help documentation is really good about how to do that, so you can go there to find out more information. So yeah, Tim, I took, I took information from pictures and spreadsheets and GIS data, I mashed them all up together, and I created an application stored in ArcGIS Online that presents GIS information in a way that many people have never seen before. Because what you're looking at is not the traditional GIS app or map. So, all right, thank thanks, you. Eric. So you can see that process is actually fairly simple. This might be something you want to think about actually training staff and some other departments to do. So your skill to sharpen here is being able to present information to the public in useful, easy-to-use ways.